builders of the future welcome back to the ais class blueprint the podcast where architecture meets innovation one pain at a time i am your host debanjana and today we will be answering surprisingly one of a tough question that is how do you choose the right glass for your building exteriors because let's be real glass isn't about looking sleek it's about performance sustainability and yes most importantly about saving your electricity bill With us today is someone who literally sees the world through glass. Industry expert and business head at AIS, Mr. Salesh Ranjan Gupta. Welcome back to the show, sir. Thank you so much, Devanjana. Super excited to be here once again. Likewise, sir. So now that you have made us aware about the different types of glass, its application, and even the future trends in glass, it is time for you to tell us about how glass can be used wisely in buildings. because i have attended many seminars and webinars where it has been emphasized that glass in india should be used in an optimized manner and the selection should be based on so and so criteria so my first question to you is why is glass selection such a big deal for india today especially when it comes to selecting glass for the building exteriors it's not actually a big deal to be very frank because when you asked this question and uh, you said so and so criteria those so and so criteria if we know it becomes very easy what you expect from the glass and that is what the selection criteria which you have to take care of the kind of product which is available the kind of uh, performance what you are needed everything is available you just need to find the right wish list for yourself and that is how you select your glass so today with the high performance glass which is available there are science behind it which can makes this glass unique there are a style as you said that glass is not only the aesthetic but yes aesthetic is an important factor so there is style behind that the most important part i would say is the strategy what you deal with when you are selecting any kind of product in a building that three things makes the glass unique in the overall selection criteria I love the way you have put those three words together science style and strategy so we have discussed about how it's important to think about wise usage of glass in buildings and why but now comes the question of how and when should someone start thinking about glass selection it's at the beginning when you are thinking about the building you should think about glass okay that is the biggest mistake what we are doing today hmm. building is erected it is ready to take glass and at that point of time we start thinking what kind of glass to be used isn't it wrong you cannot do anything but try to find the product which is giving you those uh, features think about a building which is not yet built it is at the drawing stage and at that point of time you are thinking which kind of material to be used including glass at that point of time glass can give you the best solution in your building yes if you are looking for these features there are functions which is available which helps you in understanding like your light transmission what kind of light transmission you are using again that depends on the opening sizes in the building what kind of shg is which is called solar heat gain coefficient what kind of u value what you are looking at what kind of processing what you want on the glass depending on the size of the building all these i normally call them as the blood test of the building and the report of that blood test can tell you that how healthy or how unhealthy your building is <laughs> i love that analogy blood tests for your building so i have heard people uh, you know tossing terms like solar control low e igu can you break those terms for us yeah thank you for asking this question devanjana yes this is a very pertinent question and important question because all these terms which people are using they no a little about it and that is where the glass selection gets those challenges which we are facing today i'll simplify it for you and our viewers like loe glass a loe glass you can consider that as a thermal jacket mm-hmm. it keeps you warmer inside during the winters 
Think about a solar control glass. This is like your sunglasses, which you are wearing goggles when there is the sun outside to control that solar radiation. But as you said, the IGU as well, along with these things, it, there is no connection between that. IGU is a kind of processing which is known as insulated glass unit. IGU is a process by, by which you put two glass hermetically sealed inside the spacer. What it does, it insulates your building from the outside environment. So there are multiple terminology which is available in glass. These are the three uh, which, which you just spoke about. There are light transmission, there are multiplication factor, there are effective apertures, WWR. There are multiple these kind of uh, terminology, but not to get into the complexity of all these terminology. What you should do is you should filter out the requirement what you are looking for. And basis that requirement, you can select the product. Right, rightly said. So all these terminology, what I am talking about, you can consider them as the blood test of the building, which tells whether the building is healthy or the building is unhealthy. Amazing. So now let's add a twist to this. Okay. Say that I have got my first residential project where my client has asked me for a kind of glass which allows for maximum light. So in that case, how should I convince them about controlling the light is as necessary as controlling the heat? Oh, so you have thrown a challenge to me. Challenge <laughs> accepted. Yes. So if you are talking about a residential building and you are looking for the maximum light. So maximum light is not the right word. The right word is optimum light. Why? Because maximum light can create the glare. And if it will create a glare, you will have to put the blinds on and all the purpose of using the glass gets defeated. Okay. And that is why you have to optimize the light. In addition to that, if you are using the high performance glazing, which is able to reduce the heat ingress in the building, it will give the interior more cooler ef uh, effect. But again, I am cautioning you that whenever you are doing all these analysis, look at the multiple factors like where the building is located, what is the orientation of the building, what kind of passive designing what you have done. If you are talking about passive designing like creating the overhangs or the chajjas in the building, if you have done that, great, then you may not have a very active requirement on the glasses. So you are saying that instead of limiting, I'm actually getting more options in high performance leasing. Absolutely. That's a nice way to look at it. But what about the structural stability? Like say in a skyscraper, I would imagine that the glass thickness would change to accommodate the wind pressure, right? Yes. So at AIS, we believe in safety first and always. And this question touched upon the safety parameters. So yes. This is very important criteria to look upon whenever you are designing a building through glass. When you go up in the building at the more heighted elevation, the wind pressure increases. And at that time, you have to take care of the wind load. And thanks to the technology which is available today, there are tools available which can help you in uh, designing the glass for that building depending on the wind load. Let's talk about wind load normally is calculated in the kPa, kilopascals. So you are designing a building for 2.5 kPa at say 10th floor, but at 40th floor, it can go up to 3.5 kPa. So your building design will not be same at the 10th floor as well as at the 40th floor. And that is what we need to take care of whenever we are designing for the wind pressure. And in that wind pressure, there is one more thing which is prevalent today is that you have seen all the societies where all the buildings are surrounded by each other and it creates the wind tunnel effect where the wind gets into the center of the building and it goes up and that creates the gust and it can suck the glass out of the building and that is where the overall structural designing becomes very important and at AIS we have our technical team which does all these analysis with the help of the tool and this tool can give you the precise thickness and the processing of the glass which is required. And my humble request to everyone, do not compromise on the safety feature. That's a lot to think about before choosing a glass just based on its aesthetics and color. 
I was so much enjoying our conversation, but I am already on my last question. So my last question to you is, what is the one mistake that people always make while choosing the glass for exteriors? Currently, if I want to be truthful, there are a lot of mistakes which is being done. But if I have to pinpoint one out of that, the biggest mistake what we do is we put the thought behind the design. We design the building and then we start thinking what kind of glass to be used. Just change that and reverse this overall process. You think what kind of glass to be used for this building because this building is unique, its requirement is unique. And then you start designing the building, all the problem which gets into at the end when you are uh, selecting any glazing product, it will go away. And that is, I think, the biggest mistake what we all do is in the process of the glass selection. Sir, this was insanely insightful. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's my pleasure, Devanjana. It's always good to be here and talk about glass. Likewise, sir. And to our viewers, Remember, whether you are sketching your dream home or a 20-storey facade, the right class isn't just about transparency. It's about clarity of thoughts. Until next time, stay sharp, stay curious and keep seeing things clearly. Thank you.